Welcome to the Permission Slip Podcast, where I, empowerment coach, mindset expert, and holistic nutritionist, Carmen Oling, share with you the tools, conversations, and resources you need to write your own permission slip, take massive action, and become obsessed with your own life. Let's get started. Welcome back to the Permission Slip Podcast. This is going to be a mini episode for you today, all about your voice and your story. I know for certain that stories are the thing that connect us more than anything else. I could tell you the steps one, two, three to get from here to where you want to be all day long and speak until I'm blue in the face about strategy and practices and things that you can implement. However, what I know to be true time and time again is if I tell you my story, that's going to impact you even deeper and you're going to be able to find myself in your story and you're going to be able to start carving your own way, making your own path, going on your own journey that's deep and meaningful to you. Because if I just say one, two, three, do these things, it's not going to be a hundred percent aligned for you. It may be partially in alignment, but it's not going to be a hundred percent in alignment. And so I want to encourage you today to think about your stories because we're all teachers. Believe me, you're a teacher too. You've been in training. And our voice and our story connects others in a deep, meaningful way. And there's this calling on your heart. I know that you have it. God's placed it there. He's calling you higher. And when you share what you've been through and the lessons during your life, no matter how small the lesson or experience might seem to you, you become a teacher and a transformer and an unlocker of things for other people. Now, I used to think that my story wasn't good enough to share. That's not even a thing. What I was doing is I was looking at other people's stories and saying, I didn't have it bad enough, worse enough. It wasn't as traumatic. And so if I share my story, like it's not going to be good enough. That's what it came down to. It wasn't that my challenge was small and your challenge or whoever I was comparing to was big. It was just my story, my challenge was not going to be good enough to make a difference in the lives of others. And that's just not true. And I want you to know that your stories and your lessons and the things that you are meant to teach and show up your unique way they're good enough, just like mine are good enough. And so I want you to start thinking of your stories. Now, what happens though, and what happens to me still to this day and happened to me before, before, like previously, before I even started sharing my stories is that my ego self would kick in and I would have self-doubt, fear of rejection. I would have regret, feeling isolated. I would busy myself. I would procrastinate. I would try to make things perfect. You know, that whisper inside your head that says, who do you think you are? You're not ready. Your story is not good enough. You don't have enough. You're not going to be able to make the impact. And our ego self is really designed to keep us away from the truest essence of who we are that's inside of us that just needs to be unlocked again. And our stories are one of the ways that we can unlock the truest essence of who we are and get closer to our highest self and start letting go some of these layers of protection that we've built on the outside. Your life is a message and your voice can be the superpower and your story can create strength, not only for yourself, but for others. And if you think about it, our gifts are really in the messages and the stories that we're telling and relating to other people. So how do you start coming up with your stories? Well, I just want to have you get out a pen and paper, and this is what this mini episode is about. I want you to think back throughout your life, and I want you to just make a list of the top five 
challenging times in your life. They don't have to be a traumatic event, but just a time that you felt very challenged. Maybe you were disappointed. Maybe it was a failure. Maybe there was a sickness, loss of a job or a loved one, a divorce. Maybe something just seemed so impossible and unfair and like you weren't resourced at all. I want you to really think about this for a moment before you rush along, because after you get those moments written down, I want you to think about these things as you start to extract the stories out of these, mo these moments so you can be the teacher. I read once in the book, Believe Bigger, that Remember, the mess is the masterclass for your life mission. So sometimes what we think is a mess, it's really our masterclass to start being the one, being the one to share the story and the lesson that we've learned so we can really show the world how great life truly is. So now that I've given you some time to write down your five moments, here's what I want you to ask yourself. What do you wish someone had told you back then? And you want to answer this question for each of the challenging moments. For example, when I was diagnosed with um, MS at age 25, and I started just doing everything the doctor said and being a good girl and following all the protocols, I wish someone would have told me, Carmen, you have to be your greatest health advocate. Not everything the doctors are going to tell you to do are going to be of your best interest. Your body knows and you need to listen to it and you need to research and you need to ask questions because you need to be your advocate. They are not you and they are not inside of your body. So when you ask yourself, what do you wish someone had told you? If I would, if someone would have told me that, I could have saved myself a year of taking this horrendous medication that made me feel like I had flu, the flu three times a week and left marks all over my body and left me in a, a deep depression that I was hiding and making, making, like making it mean something about myself. I was very shameful of this because I didn't want people to look down upon me. It was a rough time and I felt very, very alone. And I possibly could have saved myself from that if someone would have told me that. So the next thing is, what do you believe at your core to be true? So as you think of these five most challenging times of your life or traumatic events, whatever you've written down, what do you now know at your core to be true? So when I think about this for, we'll just use my MS story because that's what I started off with. I know deep in my core, in my heart, that one of the reasons that that little genetic MS key was turned on for me at that time when I was 25 was my chronic need to prove myself, my chronic need for outwardly acceptance, the state that my nervous system had been in for years that was in a state of being chronically activated, also while being hypervigilant about protecting myself and protecting others and protecting the perception of others around me, protecting myself from being exposed because if someone really found out who I was, that, um, yeah, I wouldn't know what to do. Would they like me? Would I be accepted? And so all of this was so much pressure on my body that's so precious and I was not kind to myself. I was in constant judgment and criticism of myself and constantly going, 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 going and not stopping. If you asked me what, what I felt, I wouldn't know. Like there was no time to think. And I know it to be true that I was in that constant state of rushing now that I've unraveled the rush, that that was one of the reasons I was diagnosed with MS. And one of the reasons that I thrive today 
is I've unraveled that rushing. I've unraveled that nervous system while I'm still working on it because it's so easy to get back into that condition pattern. I know that to be true. And then the last question is, what is the one thing that you want others to know? One thing that would really give them hope, confidence, and clarity. Hmm. I really just kicked off this podcast and I didn't, I didn't write any notes for this. This was just on my heart. So as I think about that, the one thing is... It's not outside of yourself, it's within you. But you've probably just covered it up with layers and layers of this identity that you've built for yourself that's not the truest essence of who you are. And if you can unravel that and let go of some of your armor and share and be vulnerable and connect deeply with others, with yourself, with God or spiritual relationship of your own understanding, you can start letting go of control and letting go of some of the pressure. And when you let go of some of the pressure and some of the control, it creates some space in your life. You can realize and be grateful for what you have and be content and still hope for more, but do it in a way that feels aligned and in flow you feel free and clear and confident and it doesn't have to be that hard maybe things will be challenging but you can approach them with ease and joy and a sense of curiosity that completely changes things for you not only outwardly but innerly innerly that's not even a word but <laughs> inside that creates this calm sense of peace, even if you don't yet see the end result. And that's available to you. It'll just take a little bit of work to get there. So owning your voice really takes a mindset shift, owning your story and telling it, but it invites so many new possibilities. And when you think about it, this is not something you're going to have to practice. This is not something that you're going to have to learn. Okay, you might want to practice telling the story just to feel comfortable with it. But it's not something you can necessarily write or script. It's already happened. And when you share it from your heart with a place of passion, it just flows. And when it just flows, you know for certain that it's going to hit the heart of someone else. It's going to impact them in a big way. It's going to become part of your purpose. And purpose always leaves us clues. And one of the best ways we can find purpose is to show up and help other people naturally. And it, our purpose just powerfully comes along when we do that. And it starts with sharing our stories and our lessons. So that's all that I had for your, for the podcast today. I just want to encourage you to find your voice, to let go of the need to dole yourself, let go of the need not to speak up when you want to speak up, let go of the need to fit in, let go of the need to abandon yourself just to fit in and start stepping up to be the one to be the one to share your stories and share vulnerably and share the lessons to impact the lives of others in a big way because when you do you can be the one to show the world how great life truly is and through that opportunity it creates so much freedom and flow and joy and aliveness in your own life Just merely by your presence and showing up, you'll be creating a ripple effect in the world. So I'd love to hear from you too. You know, if this is something that hit, hit home with you, uh, click the link in the show notes because I am doing a masterclass on July 20th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 
around if holistic life coaching might be right for you. If you're feeling like you have some of those lessons and stories inside of you, this could be a good move. Maybe your purpose is to share those and then to guide others to do the same. So click the link in the show notes if you want to join for free or get the replay of that masterclass to see if that might be a good fit for the next step, your next part of your journey. But other than that, start writing down your stories, start answering those questions we wish you would have known. And how can you provide hope to other people and what lessons do you want to share? And just simply by sharing your story. You're going to be impacting the lives of so many. Okay, shoot me a DM with what you think of this one. I can't wait to hear from you. What were your takeaways? And I will talk to you soon. 